floor back. Luxury car dealer. Wonder what's in here. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Today, what are we going to drive? 488 AMG Special Edition Porsche Lambo. No, none of the above. That thing. I really like Tesla cars for their engineering and their performance. I have to say the ride is jiggly. It's a little strange. Yeah, it's brisk. But it's not brisk enough for me. As you might know from this channel, I just bought one for parts for my next EV project. But for people about to buy their first or even their next EV, there's a bit of a problem. It used to be that people say, oh, that's just Elon being Elon. Everybody knows he's loose. But things have changed a bit in the last year or two. Now we're at the point where some of those people are saying they don't care how good the car is, they just don't want to buy one that supports him. And with his pricing policies, he's not making any friends with his existing owners either. To other car makers, this of course spells opportunity. Now I know Mark's not here because Mark regards mid-size SUVs that we see so many of as just being a commodity, white goods, an appliance. But I actually think this car is more than that. I much prefer the styling of it to the Model Y. I think it's kind of like halfway to being a Porsche Macan, don't you reckon? Maybe? Okay, not quite, but it's a good step. It's, it's thankfully devoid of all those sharp angles and creases you see so often, particularly on Toyotas. Um, so I actually, I actually do like it. I like the 20-inch wheels. I like the svelte styling. I do like it. Look at this. It's super nice interior. Honestly, this is more like a Mercedes E-Class. Space, look at that, huge. Yeah, the uh, semi-rectangular wheel works really quite well, I think. That fits very nicely there. Yeah, it's a quality interior, isn't it? Look at that. Oh. Mm. Put the windows halfway down. But this is obviously left-hand drive Chinese car. So this is not, don't take it as gospel. Anything you see in this car will be exactly like the Aussie one. Uh, the orange, I think, is too bright for me. And I wish they had something other than black, white, silver and grey, apart from the orange. I gather in other markets they've got a nice teal or light blue or something but what do you think I, I think it actually looks really quite nice and much nicer than Model Y my, just my opinion I'm glad you mentioned the Tesla Model Y Stu now this car the G6 long range price wise lines up pretty well exactly against the Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive not the Tesla Model Y long range which is an all-wheel drive car with superior performance and a much higher price tag but ironically its claimed range is 533 k's, which is still less than the 570 claimed by this car. Now it's pretty clear what's happened. Xpeng management have said, get the best selling car in the world last year, now make me a car that's better in every way, looks better, is the same price or cheaper, and isn't built by that loopy guy who bought Twitter that a lot of people don't like anymore, you know the one. Build me a rear wheel drive with exactly the same dimensions, length, width, height, wheelbase, weight, seating configuration, and now give it the same big panoramic roof, lots of USB ports, couple of cool smartphone spots, LED headlights, and give it one and a half ton towing capacity, just like the Tesla. Now I want you to improve on all the things the Tesla does well. Make it accelerate quicker, have a bigger battery, longer range, and use 800 volt, not 400 volt architecture so it charges faster, and fix that choppy ride. Now give it a seven year warranty, not four, and maybe just to give people peace of mind, make it eight years on the battery. Now I want you to add in all the things that are missing from the Tesla that people like, like a 10 inch screen right in front of the driver, make the seats just as comfortable and fully reclined too, like that Ionic 5 thing does. And how about heated and cooled seats in the front, heated in the rear and a heated steering wheel. Uh, what else? Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, Tesla don't do that. And make sure the screen's super responsive too. So make sure you use the latest Nvidia and Qualcomm Snapdragon, all that stuff. And don't compromise on the comfort and the quality. I want this to be a luxury car, not a larder. So go nuts with that vegan leather stuff. Just try and imagine I'm saying all this in Chinese, okay? 
Now, seeing as we paid almost a billion dollars for that DD automotive driving company, go crazy with the self-driving and self-parking tech. Tesla want another 10 grand for their full self-driving or five grand for the enhanced autopilot. So give them the works, no extra charge. I want like 31 sensors, LiDAR, radar, 12 cameras, 12 ultrasonic, just go crazy. Okay, performance, don't put those Ling Long tires on it. Give it some sticky Michelins on 19 inch. No bugger it, they're Aussies, give them 20 inches. They can deal with the potholes. Okay, styling wise. I don't want a quirky design things. I don't need piano strings in the doors. I want something rounded and slippery, a bit like a European car, but not bland either. I've got to appeal to those Mercedes buyers. So think Genesis, okay? Round. Right, now if you can do all that for about 60 grand on the road, you'll undercut anything equivalent by miles. Got it? Not a full on test drive today because we're in the center of the city and it's just no point just going 40 k's an hour from one traffic light to the next, but we'll get one out in the open road soon. Oh damn it, let's go for driving one just to see what it's like. So this won't be a full on test drive today, we'll do that at a later date, but I just wanted to get a first feel for the uh, Haupang G6 or Xpeng as you'd probably say in Australia. Now. These guys have obviously looked at the world's best-selling car, the Model Y, and said, we're gonna take that car and we're gonna do everything it does, and then we're gonna do it all a little bit better. And all the things it doesn't do, that people have complained about, we are going to do. For example, while there's no head-up display, I have a screen in front of me, and it perfectly matches the size of the steering wheel. I've got cooled and heated seats, which is my absolute favorite feature. Now, obviously, on a drive around, the inner city of Sydney, we can't do a lot of, <laughs> this is a real test, typical inner city driving, thanks guys. We can't do any performance driving around here, obviously. Whoa. This is a real test, this is like an obstacle course, isn't it? And when I get in narrow confines, the screen automatically swaps to this. Oh boy. This is not your average high performance drive, but it is, it's a high performance test of me, that's for sure. I do like the ride. The question on our channel is, of course, is it sporty enough? Now, the Model Y is often criticized for being too harsh. And I was afraid this one was going to be too soft to appeal to our audience, sporty drivers like you. The damping feels pretty good, but I won't know until we really get a chance to push it. The steering also firmer than I expected, which is good but first impression, not a lot of feedback. Now this is the long range premium version of the car, which probably lines up best against the base model Y. Uh, the price wise, we don't know exactly, but it's gonna be around 60 grand. The entry level one, maybe 54 plus on road, something like that, this will be about 60. Great reversing camera, that works well. I must say the whole feel of the car is very nice. The steering weight's quite good. First impressions, it actually is really nice. It is quite amazing in terms of technology how far these cars have come in just the last two years. I cannot imagine where we'll be in another 10. But for now, this car is absolutely loaded with a whole lot of stuff I haven't even touched on. And it's all standard. So go and read the spec sheet, it's incredible. Compared to anything of comparable spec, this car seems to be a huge value for money. I can already tell it's brisk, but it's not stupid fast like an Ionic 5N or many of the other all-wheel drive EVs that we have reviewed. Later in the year, I'm told they'll be doing one of those as well, so look forward to that. This one is certainly fast enough, but how it handles on a twisty road, is it fun or is it a barge? I really don't know yet, but I look forward to finding out. We're not exploring the outer limits of the performance here, but it's really just a first taste, a little bit of a 6.2 seconds north to 100. Model Y is 6.9 for the entry level car. Obviously the long range and the performance are much faster, but this is fast enough. Even the entry level one of these is 6.6 .6 or 6.7, I think, north to 100. And um, the battery formulation is different. This is one that has the NMC battery, uh, whereas the base model car's got uh, lithium ion phosphate, but really makes no difference except that for this type of battery, NMC, you regularly charge them to just 80%, unless you're going on a trip. But even then, WLTP ratings are usually quite optimistic. So what's the real range? 
let's just assume about 500 k's until we actually test it. And we're back. Just like that, I'll just wait for these nice pedestrians. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> what a friendly guy. Yeah, <laughs> look, I've got two thank yous. Doesn't get any better than that. Now, don't hit the Lamborghini. Now, you can't see this viewer, but it's saying I've got 30 centimetres this side and that. And talk about a nerve-wracking drive. Can we fit through there? Yeah, oh, we can. Look at that. I know with 12 cameras and 12 ultrasonic detectors and LiDAR and everything, that is the real showcase thing about this car. But suffice to say, the auto park in this, driving to a car park, it is creepy how well it maps out the whole thing and then parks the car. We're not going to show that today. You know, it's obviously a selling point of this car. This, it all comes in built. There's no options there. You just buy the car, you get everything. I'm hugely impressed on this first little drive. Uh, we'll have a proper one shortly. We will actually get some open roads and drive it properly. I'll just back it up a tiny bit, just so that it's a bit flatter, to make it easier for, for my, my poor deaf mute instructor <laughs> to get out. But there we are. So that's the first little drive of the Haupang Xpeng G6. Hey. Thank you very much for the drive. I enjoyed that. Okay, we struggle. You've probably never heard of Xpeng, but suffice to say they've been around in China for about 10 years. Been producing luxury cars for about four or five, and they've got revenue of about four billion last year and growing at a huge rate. Look, they're one of about 100 EV manufacturers in China. That's 100 companies, not 100 models, but they're one of the big ones. Who's going to service these cars in Australia? I don't know. All will be revealed. It's not going to be Lawback, they're just there helping out for this launch. Who knows? Okay, having mentioned the Elon perception problem, let's talk a bit about the China perception problem. Made in China, okay, let's talk about that. There is no Australian car industry anymore. It doesn't exist, so your choices are you're buying something, you know, you can buy a Ford Ranger made in Bangkok, you can buy a Korean car, you can buy a Japanese car, or more likely to buy a Chinese car. If you buy a BMW iX3, because you'd rather go European than buy a Chinese car, made in China. If you buy a Mercedes EQA, EQB, EQC, or an, or an A35, made in China. The clothes you wear, the appliances at home, your iPhone, that GoPro, virtually anything you buy in Bunnings, Chinese, so. But when you look at some of the stuff they're doing, it's really very impressive. What do you think? Is this the Model Y Slayer? Maybe this thing actually is. The Tesla Model Y is a great car, sharply priced, also made in China, and no doubt next year's one will be even better and look better. But it's hard to see where it beats this feature-laden G6. Yes, it has a little bit more space, a fruity front frunky thing, and the big one, the Tesla supercharger network, which, depending on how you use and charge your car, could be a big thing or make no difference at all. Other than that, why would you? We'll tell you the answer once we've driven this one briskly. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Thank you for your patronage and all the wonderful things you are. It's been emotional. Look at this viewer. I'm in a brand new rail station that they've just completed. Sydney is finally coming into the 21st century. And you know, the best thing of all, as a senior citizen, I get to travel for $2.50 a day. So this next trip is going to be free. Central. First oh, stop. Zero. Yeah. Love that. Zero.